Last week, we covered the public conversion of an XOF model named Nala Ray. Her coming out, being bold, sharing her testimony, and specifically in her interview with Michael Knowles, saying what her parents or fellow Christian friends and family members could have done different to save her some of the heartache. I thought it was actually very constructive. I thought there were some things that I also disagreed on, specifically her saying that one conversation could have derailed her going down the OF route. Do you think there's anything your parents could have said that would have gotten you not to do it? Absolutely. A friend of mine, Pastor Kirk Kendi, out of DC, made a great video talking about some of the other things to caution regarding Nala Ray's newfound conversion and one of them that may actually impact Christians negatively. But before we get into that, guys, my name is Ruslan. This channel exists to encourage, empower, and inspire you to live a life that blesses God. If you're new here or if you're not new here, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. There's a huge percentage of the people that watch this channel are unfortunately not subscribed. One of the things I love to do here is I love to highlight other creators other pastors who are on YouTube, local church pastors. I think that's huge, especially if you can discover a local church pastor in your area, end up connecting at their church, getting to know them, getting plugged in. I think that's a massive W. Kirk Kennedy is one of those guys. And he had some really interesting things to say about the Nala Ray debacle, not about her or her coming to faith, but about some of the dangers. And the second point that we're going to look at in a moment is going to be really interesting. But first, let's look at the first part of his conversation. Check out what he says here at the 25 minute mark um, regarding the Nala Ray public conversion. Listen up. You know, she's a recent convert and she can get puffed up by all these things that are happening. But let me tell you two more reasons why um, I'm concerned. So here's the question, why are we parading her conversion around? Now don't get me wrong, people say, oh man, what are you talking about? Is it, I'm talking about us, not her. Praise God she's saved. And I hope that for her sake, for all of our sake, to be persevered to the end. She got married, all these things, yes. She got married on Easter Sunday. What a great, what a a great anniversary. Massive W, all right? Uh, I appreciate her, her testimony. But there are some things that he, he I think, rightfully points out that actually a, a, appeal to a macro issue that we're going to get to. But let's first let, hear him out on this first part. Connecting with what she knew, yes. But we're parading her conversion around. And I'm concerned, I'm concerned that for many, it's connected to her physical appearance. It's connected to vanity. It's mm. connected to her vanity, one thing. But the other thing is this, too. I feel like... In the Christian, modern American Christian context, oh, it's bigger than that. I, I don't. I feel like we don't. We don't. Almost. We almost act like God doesn't do this stuff all the time. Like save people. Like I. I almost wonder if believers. We've gotten to a point where we just don't see people really believing in Jesus. That we almost forget that people still believe in Jesus. Like people. Like God saves people from all types of backgrounds. I'll. I'll never forget about 10, 15 years ago. I read this book called The God of Sex. And this, the last half of this book was about countless stories of people who were living in the sexual acronym community lifestyle, right? They were uh, same sex attracted. There, there was a guy who said he had been, he had been with 1,000, he was a man that had been with 1,000 men before Jesus saved him. And I remember yeah, being blown is. away because I, I, it got exposed to me back then that I just really didn't think that people like that could be saved. Like I just, I lost hope wow. for certain sins that people can be saved, right? Because we're not seeing people be saved in droves. And I wonder if for us as the church, if we've lost hope that God does save, so that when people get saved, we're literally blown away. Like why should we be blown away? You're not wrong. That's, that's heavy. So why are we blown away? Do we not know anyone in our own lives that has perhaps gone off? Maybe they weren't a famous OF person that was doing all the runs on all the podcasts, but do, do, have we not known anyone that was involved in activities like this that, that then turns their life around through Christ? Do we not know people? This is, this is why when I've gone on those podcasts and I've had the conversations with the Adam 22s and the, the Lennon the Plugs and all these people, I've seen God turn around some crazy, 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 crazy lives. And so th th that is a very interesting observation he made. Earlier in the video, he also made the observation of, in her conversation with Michael Knowles, she says that she was craving attention. Mm -hmm. And he was concerned that because she was a newcomer, she was getting the very thing that she was craving from the Christian community. And he yeah. didn't know if that was helpful, which I also thought was good. But this next part of the video, to me, is, in my opinion, one of the most important regarding this conversation. And something that we've done, but we're going to do more of. And when I would do concerts and they'd ask me to lead the youth meeting, I would have these, con I call these humble conversations where I would ask questions and they would have to raise their hands in humility. And countless times I heard believers who grew up in the church say stuff like this. Man, I wish I had like your testimony. You know, I would share my testimony. I come from 
friends, all of that. And there were people who would walk up to me disappointed and mm. would say, man, I wish I had a testimony like yours. Or I wish I had a Saul's uh, road to Damascus conversion. I mean, I'm just pretty much, boy, I've just grown up in the church. I've just been a Christian my whole life. Like I don't, and they were discouraged by that. And I remember after traveling to a number of cities, I got discouraged by that. Mm. And the reason why I got discouraged, because at the time I didn't have children. And I remember thinking, man, I don't want my kids to have my testimony though. Like I want my kids to have this kind of testimony. I grew up, yeah. I just didn't really stray that much. I, you know, sinned a little bit, but I didn't really go. And, they, and I was like, I want my kids to have that testimony. In fact, I, mm -hmm. I believe and still believe that if my kids have the testimony of, I went out and I did all this stuff and now I'm coming back to Jesus, I would feel like a fa I failed as a father. And so I still- I'm with him. He's not wrong. I am with him. Like if, if if Levi and Zoe grow up and go down this route, I will feel like I failed as a father. It's like you, my kids needed a a, a supernatural encounter to come back to the faith. Mm -hmm. I probably should have done something different. Mm -hmm. And then, and obviously that's not the case for everybody, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Yep. I mean, there are freak accidents yep. where someone's just predestined. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Go ahead. Cal one one point for the Calvinists. I wanted to go on the anti-testimony tour where I would tell these kids who grew up in the church, who've never pursued the world, none of it, I would tell them, hey, listen, your testimony is actually much stronger than mine. Let me tell you why. Because what you're hearing me say is all I did was go into the world and pursue the sins of it. And now I have, and then I, and then I follow Jesus, but now I have some of the cross that I have to carry are the habits and patterns and attitudes and from, yep. the, from that sinful lifestyle. Yep. You live in the same planet that I live on. You have the same enemy who wants you to disobey your parents, to have, to do, to do all these things, and you didn't do it. You have a much stronger testimony because you can say, even though I was tempted to do these things, I didn't do it. I trusted my parents. Mm -hmm. I could say I did them and sinned greatly, and I failed miserably, and now I'm back. And I said your testimony is much stronger than mine. The thing is, is that in like the human brain is conditioned for storytelling mm -hmm. and storytelling is more receptive when you can relate to the character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when the character can say they failed and got back up, it makes a better story mm -hmm. and it makes better storytelling and connection mm -hmm. with the audience. Mm -hmm. And so that's why these stories get so much bigger. Yes. yes. But what he's saying is super, is facts. I think what thoughts. he's getting at is, is it at the expense of faithful Christians that have been loving Jesus, raised in a Christian home, chugging along, they ain't go out in the world and wild out. They ain't do no craziness, yeah. right? And we're parading all of these stories around, which makes for great storytelling. It makes for great content. Yep. But the person that's just, hey, man, my mother loved Jesus. My father loved Jesus. They raised me in a good home. They loved me. They provided for me. They took care of me. They made sure I was in church. They made sure I got Ooh. the Bible. Right? <laughs> but think about this. Think about, you know, I, I, I think like, yes, from a storytelling standpoint, but I think about the people who are able to like really go and impact for the long haul. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of times it's people that got an early start. Yeah. It's people that didn't have all the baggage and had to spend their 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 twenties working out the issues and the traumas that came from their uh, uh, childhood years where perhaps they were assaulted or perhaps these things happened to them. Right. And granted, like, yes, God uses everything. But I, w what I love about that is I think, and I, said, and I said, we did this a couple of times, right? Where we would highlight people specifically with singles night. We yeah. had Kehal and, um, Elijah on just just good kids that love Jesus got married young loving the Lord right we've highlighted those people and I want to highlight those people more because I think those are the people that actually figure out the marriage and relationship and family part of life earlier yeah right go ahead what was your, well, what was your idea I have actually a very negative experience okay. with with exactly what he's talking about okay so I had a buddy he's a youth pastor and he was like hey I'm gonna th throw a church-wide sort of dating singleness and purity okay event mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. mainly for the young adults and for the youth mm -hmm. but everyone's invited mm -hmm. uh he had a woman speak that was a 40 year old virgin mm -hmm. hold, holding out for the lord we had he had uh another person that i think is married was married but had a, a crazy past and then he he asked me and melissa to go speak me and melissa met in high school She's my first girlfriend. Mm -hmm. I'm her first boyfriend. Mm -hmm. We get married. We love Jesus. We never, we, we had, we had no sex before marriage. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so we do our little talk like, oh, I don't really know. We did kind of like a QA and a thing. We're up there giving the Q&A and he's pumped. He's glad that we're there and everything's kind of falling flat. 
Mm-hmm. It's I don't know if it was falling flower, but this is just my perception. Mm-hmm. The lead passer comes in mm-hmm. and he kind of hijacks the whole event. Mm. He goes in and goes, Yeah, man, it's just on my heart. Right after like me and Les's session. Mm-hmm. We're all we're still up there. That's really cool. You know, that she that she's holding out till she she's 40 and she hasn't had sex yet. <laughs> It's really cool that they, but that that they met when they're young and they're mm-hmm. and they got married mm-hmm. and all this stuff. But like, there's a lot of you here that don't re- resonate with that, and like that wasn't me. Mm. I I slept with tons of women. Oh my gosh! I did all this stuff. I got hooked yeah. on crack. Oh my I gosh! I did all this whatever. All this right? Uh-huh. I lived a crazy debaucherous life, uh-huh. and I need you to know that you are not uh, forgotten, mm-hmm. and you are loved, mm-hmm. and you are and and it was like this whole thing. And I'm sitting here like. I know I didn't do crack. I know I waited to have sex with my wife. You and you wanted me here. Yeah. I knew this wasn't a good story. Like, and it was just like, it's just one of those things where it's like, I feel like, n- not to mention that pastor like just dunked on the entire yeah, yeah, yeah. thing that the youth pastor put together. Yeah. But then also the <laughs> fact that like, that he just kind of dunked on all his speakers and was like, thank you for sharing, but not relatable. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I know. That's why I don't talk about it. Because all you that's goobers why, are like, that's you why you're not at that church you don't anymore. get it. Yeah. You don't get it. You don't. It's like, all right, cool. Now, I don't know anything about dating. You do your thing. I, I know how to be married. Yeah. I know how to date someone that you're going to marry. Yep. But I don't know. I don't know what to do what you want to do. Yep. You want to. I'm sorry you're on your third girlfriend. Same principles apply. Yep. yep. Sorry that you're on your 10th girlfriend. Same principles apply. Yep. You probably suck somewhere. <sighs> and that's the part. <laughs> but, but it goes back to the thing of like, yep. I don't have a testimony. Yes. And and I get that why people are like, oh man, I wish I had your testimony. I don't wish I had their testimony. I just go, I don't, I don't have a need to like share my experience sometimes. But see, but because see, because I'm like, I'm cool, I'm chilling. But see, I feel like your experience, I feel like Kahal's, Kahal and Elijah's experience, I feel like that these are experiences that people who are in the world need to have, need to hear. To stop complaining that like it's impossible to get married and impossible to have a family and impossible to do these things. Yeah. All the people that are like, little guy can't get ahead. They don't make them like they <laughs> yeah. used to. Women yeah. are all whores. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I feel like those are the people that need to hear your testimony. Yeah. But, yeah but personally. Again, they're so like, oh, he just th- there's gonna be some sort of excuse. There's always there always is because there's not enough conflict in my story yeah. for people to relate with. But yeah. maybe we'll write a book trash. where it's a it's each chapter is like a new couple, mm-hmm. and it's gonna be like a blessed God book, and it's gonna be called like pure but not perfect. It's kind of fire. <laughs> that's kind of fire. <laughs> that'll go. That'll, hey, go. that'll go, bro. That'll go. <laughs> that'll go. So it could be like a coffee table book with like yeah. five photo shoots. So 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 it's like I think there's need to like I and, and by the way, I think I think folks that grow up knowing Jesus and grow up in church and then feel this external need to go and build their testimony. Is one of the lamest, cringiest things ever. Yeah, that's pretty bad. I, and especially if you're, you're intentionally saying those words, people yes. are like, "Man, I think I'm just in a season of building my testimony." What? Yeah, I'm not. No. I, I'm say, I've ever heard anybody use that word. I, but I've had. I, no. I had someone say like, <gasps> "I've had not not even say that word, but like, I'm just kind of conflicted. Like, I know I should be doing these things, oh, but no. I still kind of want to go hang out with my friends, and I'm really plugged into this church." And I, and I said, "Oh, you try, so you're trying to figure out if you still want to build your testimony?" Uh-huh. <laughs> And she was like, well, when you put it like that, yeah, I don't think I want to. I was like, yeah, don't. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. So l- let the Lord keep you guys. Let the Lord keep you right where he has you. Like, if you're growing up in a solid, healthy family that loves Jesus and it's it's tough and tender and they challenge you to yeah. to, 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 to love God, but, uh, but they're warm, like, these are the aspects that I think create generational lineages of, of of Christians that serve the Lord. And I feel like that's what we need more of. Yeah. That's what we need more of. I don't think we need another, I was here doing this and that and all of a sudden, right? Like, because to, to Kirk Kennedy's point, there's a lot of things that you will deal with when you have a testimony like that in mm. your Christian walk. Like you will continue wrestling and dealing with things in your Christian walk. And sometimes you'll, you'll just keep going around and round and round and round in circles because some of that... Some of that, that 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 damage that you did to yourself is it, it, it doesn't go away easily, yeah, and it requires a lot of work. So um, anyway, I think everyone wants to be special and have a, a, a fancy testimony and, and have trauma and all these things. And I yeah. think some of that stuff is kind of cringe. Dude, if I have trauma, I can start a YouTube channel. Yeah, 
That's awesome. <laughs> we see according to the Bible that prayer is extremely important in terms of us being transformed from the inside out when we get aligned with God's will. For the Christians watching this channel, I want you guys to implement these spiritual disciplines in your day-to-day -day life. And the only way I've been able to do this consistently is through writing down my prayers in a prayer journal that does a few things. One, it allows me to reflect and come to God humbly and ask him to move on my behalf. And two, it allows me to document my prayers, which ultimately helped me remember the very things that I was praying for and see the hand of God tangibly in my life when he answers them. So I would urge you, consider writing down your prayers. It could be in a blank notebook. It could even be on your phone. Or you could check out the one I personally designed and used for my own quiet time and spiritual discipline that I think will be a huge blessing. It's the exact structure and system that I've used for years to pray and be more consistent in my spiritual disciplines. You can pick yours up today by clicking the link in the pinned comment below. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.